Hello and welcome to another Drones Deep video. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, mainly because I cocked up my last uh, drone flight over at Chartham in Kent. Um, I had big plans of uh, recording a lot of the Stawa walk from Canterbury to uh, Chartham, but I didn't get enough footage for various reasons, but uh, mostly I just didn't plan ahead well enough. So I thought with the footage I did get, I'll try and do a video where I explain a little bit about how I go about editing my drone videos. It may not be the same procedure that everyone does. I may do something a little bit different than most people. I'm certainly no expert, so, um, but this is just the way I've learned how to do it. I'm gonna be using Premiere Pro, but to be honest, the way I edit, I think you'd be able to do this process on most editing uh, software. Uh, even if it's free stuff you can find on the internet these days. But I use Premiere Pro. There's a link in the description if you're interested in purchasing the Creative Cloud from Adobe, which I highly recommend if you're interested in editing, photography and all that. Um, the Creative Cloud now has a whole package uh, which you can subscribe to on a monthly basis. I've already gone ahead and imported my footage. I think most editing software will have the same setup here. You have a browser window with your footage, you have a timeline down the bottom here, and you'll have the actual uh, program monitor here to actually see what you're actually doing. Um, the way I edit, um, I will literally find a bit of music. For the music, I use epidemicsound.com. It is a subscription um, service. I think it's about £10 a month. It is a little bit expensive, to be honest. Um, but you get really good stuff. It's all royalty free once you pay the subscription. Uh, all links up to your YouTube channels, your Instagram channels, your Facebook channels, etc. etc. And I find it um, the best um, website for music. And I have used quite a few in the past. And I found that epidemicsound.com is probably the best one I've found so far. Again, the link in the description. Uh, so I need to import that. Uh, where is it? There it is. What I've decided to do is I know most of the footage I've got is quite slow, quite uh, cinematic. So I needed a bit of slowish uh, type music to go with it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just drag that down to my timeline. Uh, spread the waveform a little bit. Um, hopefully you can hear the sound because the screen recording I'm using doesn't record sound. So I chose this bit of music because it does have a lot of beats to it. Um, if you can see on the waveform, there is a lot of uh, peaks where I will try and hit and cut along those lines. It doesn't have to be every single beat, but that's the way I, I sort of edit. Um, I'll go into the first clip, and I know there's a lot of video of the river that runs between Chartham and Canterbury called the Stour. That's a whole purpose of this uh, visit. And I know there's a little type, waterfall type thing there as well, which I need, made sure I, I got plenty of. Um, so what I normally do, I, I will go into the footage, wait until it starts, and then make my uh, start in point there, go all the way down to the end, until, it, until until something happens. So for instance here, I've stopped and gone forward. So I don't want to, I don't want that in my edit. So I will make my out point there. Um, and then what I do, I'll just whack on the timeline and I'll carry on doing that type of process, finding all the interesting bits I like. So there'd be another one here from there, all the way up until we stop. Uh, so about there, another out point, another video clip there. And what I'll do, I'll literally do this throughout the entire amount of footage. So I'm not really gonna bore you to death and go through every single uh, clip and do the same process. So I'm just gonna pause here and come back again when I've done that initial process. Okay, so if we look at my timeline now, you see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, which I deemed to believe are interesting clips. If I stitch them all together now and left it like that, I'd have about five and a half minutes, but I know it, most of these clips may be a little bit samey, a bit too long, maybe a bit boring. So I'm gonna cut them down to hit the beat with the music. Music is barely two minutes. Well, it's not even two minutes. It's only one minute 55. So it's gonna be a short video. I knew it'd be a short video because I didn't get enough footage anyway. Here's my first clip I showed you earlier is the, the river. I've already decided though, I have a better clip than that. Uh, where is it? It's around here somewhere. There's a better version of that clip. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that clip now and then drag that one to the beginning. So I'm gonna use this as my opening shot. It's a little bit long. So I will chop some of the beginning off 
because I really want that little waterfall really to be the main feature of this first clip. It's coming into view there and disappears there. That'll be enough for me. I think there's just about enough footage here. There's the beat there, but I'm not going to use that beat yet. Probably use the next beat coming up. Here's a cut there. So just as it, as, just as the music beats there, that's going to be my cut point of this clip. And then I'm going to use this clip now because I, I think people still be quite interested in that waterfall, so they want to see a little bit more of it. So it's nice just to uh, join them two clips together. So hopefully with the beat of the music, it change, it, the, the cut occurs just on the beat. There, that's fine for me. I won't use all this clip. I'll probably just wait until the waterfall disappears. Hit the next beat. It's basically all this is here is river. It's not very really interesting, so it goes. And the next thing I want to use is a sort of a very large, a very wide angle of uh, the jar and paper mill and the houses you can see there are actually um, I think they used to be owned by the paper mill and I, I presume old employees used to live there but they're all derelict so there's no problem flying over these houses but that is my next clip I think it's a quite interesting clip and it's not quite to the beat of the music so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more and here, here's the beat here I'm looking for So hopefully now it's more in time with the music. A little bit too late now. <laughs> Let's get spot on. I'm a bit OCD with uh, trying to get things spot on. Now it's better. And with this clip, what I might do, because it's too long and a bit slow, I'm going to speed it up. So it hits this beat here. I want to clip to end here, so I'm going to use the rate stretch tool and just bring it all the way down to the next beat. So it should now play a bit faster. So it's twice the speed it should be. And I could make it go faster to be honest, but I'm going to leave it as it is. And you can just about see some detail of colours and autumn leaves. So that brings me on to the next clip now, which again, this is houses. So I've got quite a good bird's eye view of these houses now coming up. So I will use, again, a little bit slow for my liking, so I'll probably speed this one up again to find a nice beat to hit. There, so I'll speed it up to that beat there. Okay, I think you probably get the idea now of what I'm doing is going through each clip um, and then finding a nice beat to hit for the next cut. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more so you don't sit there and get bored to tears of watching me doing this. Uh, and I will reconvene where I'm near the end. Okay, now as you can see, I've really more or less finished the edit now. Um, I've got one major long uh, clip here. I mean, it's by far one of the most longest clips I've ever used in any of my edits, but um, it's probably one of my favourite clips as well. I mean, it's nearly 30 seconds long, um, but it really does show. Um, it shows the River Stour in all its glory, really. I've, I've got plenty of autumn colours. I've got the actual pathway running alongside, and I've also got some of this disused uh, industrial estate here as well. Uh, I've also got it here somewhere as well. Where is it? It's a nice bird's eye view. Uh, it's, it's not being used. Uh, it certainly wasn't being used then anyway, so I'm quite happy to fly over that at this time of day. What I also have done uh, is just put a little bit of a comedy ending on. And it's just a little bit of a clip of me waving goodbye. <laughs> I always try and do some sort of selfie or uh, video of myself when I'm out and about just to show where I am really. Um, what I also do to my drone videos is also I give them that um, cinema to black bar look. I don't know the actual terminology of it, but I'm just going to do that now actually. So I'm just going to create a new layer, adjustment layer. And I'm just going to drag it on top. And I'm going to find the 
crop tool which is here drag the crop effect on top go into my effect controls and give the top and bottom probably 13% uh, crop top bottom 13 13 that's probably too much let's go drop it down to nine percent each nine and nine that's better um i always do that i think drone videos um work with these two two uh, cinema bars it doesn't work all the time i mean i wouldn't do it if i was just talking to camera like this um but i think with the next technique you'll probably see um it does work a lot better like this. And what I have is I have my own custom made filter to go on top as well, give it a bit more vibrant, a bit more pop. Um, some of the footage I get from the DJI um, Mavic Mini can sometimes be a bit flat. It doesn't really give the actual footage justice and doesn't really give the location good justice either. So I have a little um, preset that I use. And it's in my preset somewhere. Uh, it's just called uh, Let's call it a, a bright high saturation. So I'll just dump that on that same layer. You can see the colours pop out a lot more now. Uh, it's a lot more, they're a lot more green. The, the yellows are all there. The blues are all there. So I'm happy to use it. it, it, it yes, it, okay, it, it can be a little bit oversaturated, but I prefer my footage to be over, oversaturated rather than undersaturated. Personal choice in my video, so <laughs> this is what I do. I think that's about it, really. What I'm going to do now is export this movie and uh, then put it on the end of the tutorial so you can all see exactly how the final edit ended up. So if you have any questions, obviously by all means, put them in the um, comment section below. Again, I'm no expert. Um, this is just the way I do things. Um, I could be doing things wrong. So if you notice anything I'm doing wrong, or some things I could do better or quicker, again, put a little comment in the uh, comment section below. And hopefully I'll have another video next Saturday if I can get it out while well, it's not windy. Cheerio for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.